Hey everyone, Jordan here with 9to5toys, and today we're checking out the Dell Ultra Sharp webcam. At $200, the feature set and price is very similar to the Razer Keo Pro, which we're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison. So hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a good idea of which one you want to pick up. So let's dive in and take a closer look at the Dell Ultra Sharp webcam. Thanks for watching 9to5toys. Be sure to like, subscribe, and enable notifications with the bell icon so you don't miss any upcoming videos. All right, so a real quick overview. This is the Dell UltraSharp webcam. It comes in at $200, the same price as the Razer Keo Pro. We do have both of them mounted up here on the top of my monitor, and we will be taking a side-by-side -side comparison to look at them as well throughout this video. One other note is that we are recording on the Neat Microphones Bumblebee 2, which we just did a review of, and I'll link that up here in the corner if that's something you wanna check out. The more I use this microphone, the more I like it, so give that a watch. All right, and first off, let's take a look at the design of the Dell UltraSharp webcam. It features a deep deep cylindrical design. And this way, when you are looking at the camera straight on from the front, it looks pretty small. From the side though, it is probably about four inches deep and the monitor clip attaches to the camera magnetically on the bottom. One note here with the monitor clip, while the Razer Keo Pro can be adjusted up and down and left and right, the Dell UltraSharp camera can only be adjusted up and down. There is no side to side motion here. So this kind of limits the options of where you can place this camera. But Dell also includes a tripod mount with a standard threaded stand and this also magnetically connects the camera just like the monitor clip. So to recap, the Dell UltraSharp webcam works perfectly when centered on a monitor, but if you do need a little bit more flexibility of where to put it on your monitor or would prefer a different angle, then the Dell might not be the best choice. But of course, you can also use that tripod mount and place it anywhere with that. One other neat feature here with the design is the lens cap. It has a magnetic connection that easily mounts to the front of the camera, but when you pull it off to use the camera, instead of placing it on a desk, you can place it on the back of the camera as a kind of a handy place to hold it, which can hopefully prevent losing the lens cap. And just like the Razer Keo Pro on front, there is a little white light that will illuminate to indicate when the camera is in use. Setting up the Dell is pretty straightforward. Get it out of the box, attach the monitor clip, plug in the cable, and plug it into your computer. And then you do want to download Dell's peripheral manager to make adjustments to the camera on your computer. But otherwise, it should be available as an option for camera in whatever program you are using. All right, so first off, let's take a look through the Dell Peripheral Manager app. And one thing to note here, uh, obviously you can see there is a preview. I'm just recording this through OBS. There's a preview right in here. If you click out of the app at all, that preview will go away. And so you do have to be active in the app for that preview to show up. All right, so first off, we have presets. Uh, you can you know make a bunch of changes to these. You can add additional presets. There's a lot you can do in here. Uh, that just you know makes it easy to, if you have different lighting scenarios that you wanna use this camera for, makes it easy to toggle between. Next up, we have camera control uh, with AI auto framing. It will zoom in, you know, takes that large, you know, 4K image, so plenty of resolution there, and then it can kind of zoom and follow you if you do move around the frame. So if you are kind of active at a standing desk or if you're standing off to the side, you know, enable this and then it will frame you up a little bit better in center. But typically I leave this off so I have, you know, more options for the field of view. So we have a more narrow 65 degrees, we have the medium 78 degrees, and then the wider 90 degrees. And within any of these, you can also adjust the zoom, so you can zoom in and out there really easily. I'm just going to leave it at 78 degrees right in the middle though. And then we have autofocus, which has worked really well in my experience on the Dell uh, UltraSharp webcam. But if you do want to turn that off, you know, hard set your focus, that's really easy to do. So, you know, here it would be closer and you can go further. So it's really easy to manually set your focus, but I've just left it on most of the time and it's worked very well in my experience in most lighting conditions. Next up, we have a priority for either exposure or for frame rate. So, you know, if you're a streamer and really want to make sure that you're keeping that 60 FPS, put it on frame rate. But if you want to make sure that your exposure is always good, you know, if you're in a conference call and just want to make sure that your exposure is good, you can flip it over to exposure there. All right, so next off we have color and image. So one of the big features here is uh, HDR. And so we'll flip that on. I don't typically find myself using this very much though. There are definitely some tricky lighting scenarios where it does make uh, a big difference to uh, help with exposure. Uh, I don't usually like, you know, when there is some decent lighting in the room, I don't usually like what it does to my face. It kind of makes it a little more red, uh, which my face is red enough already. I don't feel like I need that. So for me personally, um, I typically turn that off. Uh, yeah, except for some tricky lighting scenarios, which we might take a look at here in a little bit. And obviously we have auto uh, white balance, which you can manually set if you want. I usually leave it on auto. We have brightness, sharpness, contrast, 
contrast, saturation. Uh, the only one I really want to take a look at here is sharpness. Uh, obviously, we'll turn that all the way down and it does soften things up and then we'll turn it all the way up and it definitely makes things sharper. You can see a lot more detail um, like on my sweatshirt here. So I'll put it back uh, probably around like 40%, 45%. And then uh, we have an anti-flicker either at 50 hertz or 60 hertz. And then the last tab here uh, is a capture tab where you can set your different resolutions and frame rates. So this does do 4K. Uh, it's a, it seems like a really sharp picture and works really well. It does 4K at 30 or 24 FPS. So if you do want that full 60 FPS, then you need to shoot at full HD or HD. So here I just switched it to full HD and I also put it up to 60 FPS. So this is gonna give you a little bit smoother motion. Uh, it also uh, definitely isn't as high resolution as what the uh, 4K was as well. So here you could try playing with a sharpness to bring it up a little bit. Though if you push it too far, it starts to look you know, like that fake sharpness in my opinion. So I wouldn't probably take it above like 55 or something like that. All right, so back down in there, uh, we also have a countdown that you can enable, a three, two, one countdown. You can put on a framing grid if you wanna make sure that you know, you're always in frame. And you can also set a media files location uh, so you, there is a record button down here at the bottom, so you can just record files, you know, record yourself talking to the camera really easily locally uh, through this app. All right, so here I have both Razer Synapse and the Dell Peripheral Manager apps open here. Uh, I have found that the Dell app is a little bit easier to navigate. Uh, it seems to work a little bit better with OBS too, have a little bit of an easier time kind of swapping between Dell and OBS. But there are a lot of, you know, really similar controls in here. Obviously with um, the Razer app, you can turn on and off autofocus, turn on and off HDR. And we do have a full review of this, uh, which I'll link up here in the corner if you want to check out a review of the Razer Keo Pro. All right, and so next, if you want to take a side-by-side -side look, side-by-side -side comparison of these two images, and in both apps, I'm just going to reset all settings, get that back to normal, uh, and so we can take a look at what it looks like straight out of the camera, and then we can make adjustments to that as well. Uh, a couple of things I want to do here after doing that, you can see that the HDR turned on on the Razer. I'm going to turn that off. And then also over here on the Dell, I'm gonna make sure that, that is disabled and which it is. Okay, so now we'll bring these into OBS. We'll get them blown up and do a side-by-side -side comparison. All right, so here we have the two cameras side-by-side -side, so we can compare images and we'll put them through a few different lighting scenarios so you can get an idea for how they perform. We do have the Dell, which is on the left side of the screen and the Razer, which is on the right side of the screen. Uh, so here in just kind of like a normal scenario, I have some lights on in the background, I have a little key light up here. Obviously I have that one light that's set up for my A-cam, kind of providing a kind of backlight, side light, rim light kind of thing here. Uh, and so you can get an idea for how, the, how that's performing. I will say I do like, well you can kind of see the Razer's already kind of lost its focus a little bit. That's definitely one issue with that is that it, uh, does a lot of focus breathing and can kind of go in and out of focus pretty easily. Uh, but on the Dell, I would say that, you know, it looks maybe a little bit more contrasty, a little more saturated, which I'm not the biggest fan of. Uh, one really nice feature with the Dell though, is that even while you are in OBS here, you can go into the Peripheral Manager app and make changes to brightness, sharpness, contrast, and saturation. So just within the app, I'm gonna turn down the saturation here. Uh, so I, you can crank it up too if you want. But that's something you can't do with Synapse. Uh, it just kind of locks you out of any control when you are using the TO Pro in another application. So that's something that's really nice to be able to make some adjustments to it. Uh, oh, you can also adjust the field of view while you are still using it in OBS. Uh, you can turn autofocus off and so you can adjust the focus, which is really nice. Um, you can't change any of the capture settings. You have to leave the resolution the same, I think because OBS is you know, taking care of that resolution. One change I'm gonna make really quick here. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. I don't think so. But I'm going to turn the resolution of the Dell up to the full 4K. But I wanna to check to see if it looks sharper when it's set to 4K than what the Razer does. So we'll set that there, pull it off to the side. If you hold Alt and drag this, you can crop in pretty easy. All right, so we'll set it off here. Uh, obviously the Dell is still on the left side. This is in 4K mode now. Um, so the frame rate is gonna be a little bit slower. This drops it down to 30 FPS, whereas the Razer is still set at 60 frames per second on 1080. But we'll take a look at that you know, resolution, try to tell which one looks sharper. 
I do think that the Dell does look a little bit sharper, you know, just looking at the screen right here. And you can also still, you know, dial up the sharpness a little bit within the Dell Peripheral Manager app. And so I'll turn that up a little bit more. And so that's, I think, is also gonna make it look a little bit nicer. So for web conferencing, you know, not everything's gonna be able to take advantage of that. But when you are in OBS, you know, this could give you a sharper image if you're doing some full screen stuff. So definitely something to keep in mind. Although also keep in mind that you can't do 60 FPS when you are in this mode. As you can see with my hand, it's not as smooth as what it is over on the Razer. All right, so now uh, I'm gonna put them both back in 1080. We're gonna turn on HDR mode so we can get an idea of what that looks like. All right, and so now we have HDR modes turn on both of them. Uh, I'm gonna check to make sure exposure and everything is set the same. All right, so here's another scenario. Uh, I turned off the backlights, so I do still have the uh, key light here above my monitor. You can see from this camera angle, you know, what kind of lighting we're working with. It's my monitor, this light, and then a little bit of light from this desk lamp as well. Um, but this is an interesting comparison. You know, I feel like the razor is a little bit brighter in this scenario, but here we can see, you know, what kind of adjustments I've made to it. With the configure video, it's in the middle with brightness, camera control, exposure is set to zero. I turned off the low light compensation, which made it look a little bit better. If you turn that on, it kind of blows it out. So we're gonna turn that back off. So you can see I have things set to auto, set to right in the middle. Uh, everything's, you know, kind of straight out of camera there with the razor. We'll turn the Dell back on so we can get a comparison there. Um, yeah, one, the Razer looks maybe a little bit too bright, but I guess in comparison, maybe the Dell looks a little bit too dark. And so this is in standard mode. Uh, let's see what these look like with HDR turned on. All right, and so here we have HDR turned on both of the cameras. Um, I would say, you know, it looks like the Dell got a little bit brighter. The Dell, again, is one over here on the left. It also looks like it's getting a little bit noisy here in my sweatshirt and definitely here on the back wall as well, a little bit on the ceiling. Uh, the Razer Kio, I mean, things look pretty even across my face. Um, I'd maybe like to see a little more contour, a little more contrast in there. It's also making my face a little bit more pinkish, a little bit reddish. Uh, I do have, you know, auto white balance and everything turned on there. So maybe that would make a difference. Uh, but yeah, interesting here. And then another thing I wanted to try, we're going to try turning off this key light. And so here we are. This is just the light from my monitor. You know, as you can see in this camera angle here, there's not much light on my face. Uh, just coming from the monitor, I guess I do still have this desk lamp on, but that's not doing much either. And so here we can really start to see, you know, the Razer Teal Pro does do better in extreme low light. You know, it's pretty noisy here on my sweatshirt in the Dell. Definitely pretty noisy here on the back wall and up on the ceiling as well. Obviously this is still in HDR mode, so we're gonna turn that off and I do think that that will make a difference for the Dell. All right, and so this is in standard mode with both cameras. You can kind of see the Razer lost its focus again, so we'll try to get that back. Um, but here with the Dell, you know, it is doing a little bit better with low light. You know, the camera isn't trying to bring up those uh, shadows as much. And so it's not as noisy here on my sweatshirt or on the back. You can kind of tell, you know, up here that it's pretty close to it. And that, you know, if you were to bring up that image, it would be a little bit noisier. But looking over at the razor side, the noise looks a little bit more natural, a little more, you know, filmic where it is kind of dancing around. It's not as artifacty as what's on the Dell. So I do still think that the Razer does better in low light, um, but the Dell is doing a pretty good job and the autofocus is just hands down a lot better on the Dell than it is on the Razer. All right, and so the last lighting scenario I wanted to try here was with, you know, a huge <laughs> backlight right behind the cameras to see how those handle that, you know, kind of some terrible lighting situations. So this is uh, just my monitor in the front and then obviously the super bright studio light in the back. Back. And both cameras are handling it, you know, pretty well. Uh, obviously, if I get off to the side here, it gets pretty hard to see me on the Dell, but the razor is still keeping me pretty well exposed. Uh, as we kind of move back and forth with my face directly in front of it, they both expose for my face, which is which is good. So, you know, if you were sitting in front of a window, I do think that they would do a decent job of exposing and, you know, picking up your face rather than the super bright light behind you. What's interesting here is I switched them both over to HDR mode and the Razer is having a heck of a time finding focus. It's like, yeah, it's having a very hard time there. Whereas the Dell is still working pretty well, you know, even in that uh, HDR mode. So just another interesting little comparison there. All right, so here we are back uh, with the normal lighting. Uh, I've got my key light on, I've got this kind of rim light and I've got the light lighting up the studio in the background there. Both cameras are set back to default. Taking a look at the image again, you know, it definitely looks a little more saturated on the Dell. The one on the left here, you know, it's kind of pulling out my uh, skin tone a little bit more, making me look a little more red, a little more pink, which I'm not sure <laughs> I'm that big of a fan of. 
and then the razor looks a little more, you know, a little bit more flat. Uh, there's not as as much color in there. Obviously, you can, you know, dial up the saturation or dial it down on either of these cameras, but this is just kind of like the stock image. All right, well, I hope this comparison has given you a little bit of insight into how these two cameras perform. Um, uh, both feature sets are really strong for the $200 price point. I do think that they both have, you know, some unique features. The Dell camera, because I can do that 4K, it can get a little bit sharper, but if you're using this for streaming at 60 FPS anyways, then you are gonna be limited to that 1080p. If I were to pick a camera, I think right now at this point, because of, you know, the ease of the software and how everything works, and then also the better focus performance, I think I would choose the Dell personally because I feel like it's a little bit easier to trust. You know, you don't have to check on it as often to tell if it's in focus or not. And I just find that the software is a little bit easier to use and it works better with OBS. It, you know, plays a little bit nicer with OBS. Picture quality wise, I think that maybe I like the color out of the Razer, you know, just in the standard mode. And then the Razer, you know, definitely does a lot better in super low light. So if you are recording, you know, in the absolute darkest, darkest cave with just your monitor at all times, then, you know, maybe the Razer would be the better choice for you. But even with just a little bit of light, you know, the Dell looks really good. And in the standard mode, there isn't, you know, that much noise. It still looks good in super low light, just not quite as good as the Razer. But of course, another big factor here is pricing and, you know, trying to find sales and deals. So make sure you're locked to 9to5toys.com because we're posting all the best tech deals daily. All right, and that'll do it for this review of the Dell UltraSharp webcam. Let us know what you think about it down in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. This is Jordan with 9to5toys.